a2 further maths further integration okay so what i'd like to do is just see if you can integrate those four functions for me please so have a go at integrating those let's pause we'll move on okay so what you probably noticed or what you hopefully noticed is this is on the back of the previous lesson so because you knew how to differentiate certain functions and get down to these results integrating these results means you could just go back and rewrite the other answers so you're looking for the pattern the one that was one plus x squared was r shine the one that was one minus x squared was r sine the one that was x squared minus one was r cosh and the one that was one plus x squared was r tan so you just looked for which ones those matched up with these which of these and don't forget the constant of integration okay now obviously it's not going to be as easy as doing that we need to be able to show where these come from as well okay so just in your notebooks then we're going to look at proving this result now this result actually comes in your formula books so they give you this result in your form books but they also expect you to be able to prove where the result comes from okay so write it down we'll go through the answer so pause there if you need to okay so the first thing we want to do is use a method of substitution we want to move, use method of substitution to show where that integral can come to that possible result just there and the, the substitution i'm going to use is x equals a tan u there's a couple of reasons why it's tan all right forget seeing the answer at the moment we know that one over one plus x squared like you just showed goes to r tan we know that all right we saw that in the, pre in the previous lesson with differentiation so we know that there's no square roots in there it's no minus signs so this is definitely the one that goes to links with tan the other answer the other reason of course is they're giving you the answer they're telling you look it's tan just here so i know that my substitution should involve tan why the a value well if you think about just rearranging this then we get u equals tan to the minus one of x over a which is where that part comes from okay so you could take that as a hint and we could see where this part comes from just here so hopefully we're going to answer with some like u in it right so what else do we need to do well if we're doing substitution we do need to differentiate it so we're going to differentiate that and at this stage you might want to pause and have a go yourself and see if you can prove the result yourself or you might want to just carry on with following it through with me right okay so first thing i'll do then is differentiate this so dx over du and i can see that because it's tan it's going to go to sec squared all right the a obviously stays where it is so i've got my differentiation there i can use that result to get what dx equals so dx is going to equal um, a sec squared u du all right so i've got my dx which is quite nice then once i've got this part just here that means i can substitute that into there i can also substitute in my x value there we go and so what's going to happen well on this bottom part just here on the denominator i'm going to get a squared plus a squared tan squared u i can pull the a squared out all i've done is put that on the top and the numerator this one plus tan squared u i know goes to sec squared u the a over a squared is just going to be one over a and i've just pulled that out to the front just for neatness the sec squared over sec squared can cancel each other out which gets you just u uh, gets you just one sorry and of course when you integrate one in terms of u you get just a u value uh, what can i do at the end oh well that u value I already know because I rearranged it to demonstrate where that came from. So u equals tan to the minus one of x over a. Substitute that back in, and there you go. There's your result as required. Okay. And so that technique of being able to demonstrate where these formulas come from in the formula books is important. You must make sure that you can do that for every single one of them. All right. So just try some of those yourself you might want to look for the patterns from the previous lesson and think oh which one's linked with which and then just have a go at one or two of them by using that same substitution technique you just saw just to prove the results you'll notice if you pick the wrong sine cos tan r sine uh, sorry shine cosh tanch if you pick the wrong one of those then it won't work 
it won't work because you won't be able to get the user right trig identity. So just try any of those. Just pick one and have a go. Okay then. So these results that you're going to stick down in your notebooks are hopefully the first one you tried with sign. If not, try proving that result yourself now. Um, the other one, I noticed so it's saying that the value here must be less than a. That's because if x is greater than a then this value here is going to be greater than one or, or less than minus one and of course the shine function doesn't work for that it only works between minus one and one so it's important that the result here is whatever number you put in keeps this between one and minus one okay for tanch that's not important all right because that could be any value for tanch not tanch sorry tan to the minus one so whatever value you like in there uh, this one though uh, we know that cosh to the minus one is always going to be bigger than one. We've seen that because we know what the inverse graph of cosh looks like. So therefore, this value here must always be greater than one, which is where this part comes from. Also, what's important is back to the original equation. It can't equal a because then that would equal zero. And that's the same reason in here. It can't equal zero. And then finally, you got shine to the minus one or r shine and that's the same value there it doesn't matter what it is because for r shine any value works for it it's different to, it's different to uh sine of course so that's why there's no limits to that and this is always going to be positive same as that's always positive it can never equal zero so not an issue because the a squared is always going to be positive okay so make sure you've got those down they are given to you in your notebooks in your formula book sorry but it is worth making sure you can prove one or two of those results yourself. So don't leave this page until you've tried proving one or two of those results. Okay. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is keep your, either your formula books in front of you or those standard results you just wrote in your notebooks and have a go at trying to use those standard results to find the answers to these integrals. Okay, so have a go at that yourself. Okay, so. Let's see how far you got with this first one then. So this first one, um, okay, the two's not in the formula, so let's pull that two out to the front. Um, I'm also gonna write nine as three squared. That makes it the a squared formula. And then I'm pretty much sorted, aren't I? One over x squared minus three squared. The important result to look for is the x value. In this case, the x is just an x. It's not a problem at all, but that must be singular to use the formula mention that in a second so my x value is fine my a value is three i'm looking for the one that's got a minus in the middle so that's the cosh function that's the one over x squared minus a squared is cosh to the minus one stick your x in stick your three in plus c okay don't forget the two on the front so there we go that's the first one done fairly straightforward because the x is on its own the second one though is a bit tougher so have a go at that yourself think about what you might need to do okay so hopefully you pulled the three out we set it up that seven although okay it's not a very nice number it's not a square number but we can still write it as root seven squared so my a value is going to be root seven well spotted if you spotted that four x squared should be written as two x all squared for me to use a formula now i've set it up so i can use the formula almost one over a squared plus x squared now the issue is this value just here must be singular it must be just x squared like that or if not you have to make it u squared you can't just use the formula straight away there and set your x as 2x okay because you'll miss something you'll miss the fact that you are using the chain rule. So the first thing you should do with these questions is make sure that you always got a single value there squared. So for two X, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change that to U. All right, so if I let U equal two X, DU over DX equals two. So therefore I can get my DX value as a half. I need to remember that I've got this extra bit to worry about. Once I've done that though, the half can come to the front, so I've got three over two. That will be u squared, which means now I can use the formula. Okay, so I'm allowed to use the formula at this stage. Notice the half has come to the front, the du now, and I'm allowed to use the formula. Which formula is it for 
a squared plus x squared, or in this case u squared, it will be shine to the minus 1. Okay, so 3 over 2 is at the front. I'm using shine because it's the a squared plus x squared square rooted formula. And then the u value can be replaced for 2x at the end. What's the most common mistake with this question is forgetting this dividing by 2 down here. Very easy to mess up, very easy to miss. All right, it's very easy to just to stick that in the formula. So be very careful. Okay, right, I wouldn't blame you for getting stuck with the third one. The third one is a subtle um, thing to do, and I'll give you a hint on it and then let you have a go. It is completed squared form. Okay, so have another go yourself with that hint. Okay, let's see if you did it right. If you didn't, it doesn't matter. Okay, so completed squared form means that I could write that bottom bit like that. And then I'm thinking, I'm almost there. Look, I've got my x value squared plus my a squared, where that bit there needs to be replaced with u. So if I could have that as a, a, a single something squared plus a squared, I can then use the formula. So what I'm going to do first is just make sure that I differentiate the x plus 1. So that u equal x plus 1. Oh, that's nice. du equals dx. So really, I could just rewrite this straight away as 1 over u squared plus 4 squared du. Then once I've got that done, I can then differentiate it. There we go. u over 4 using tan to the minus 1 formula. Don't forget the u value, though, is x plus 1. OK, so you can use completed squared form to help you with some of those answers. But what you must remember, for, certainly for both of these two, is if this isn't just a single value, you must use substitution. Just double check. There's no constant being taken out. What I'd like to do is have a go at the exercise on 9C. OK, so what I'd like to do is have a go at finding out the answer to this integral. My hint to you is rational functions and maybe partial fractions as well. So there you go. Have a go at that. OK, so the first thing you might have thought is, does the bottom differentiate to the top? And we can see it doesn't, does it? The bottom, the denominator doesn't differentiate to the numerator. So therefore, I can't use the sort of LUN idea. Maybe not yet. What I can do, though, is using my rational function skills and noticing that they're both x squared means that I could rewrite this function in terms of um, a's, b's and c's and partial fractions, that sort of idea. So how could I rewrite this then? Well, I could write it as uh, a plus b over x plus 1, c over x minus 2. Hopefully you factorise that to get x plus 1 and x minus 2. I've noticed that because these two are the same order, I'm going to get this constant term at the front. So therefore it's an a. If that was higher, don't forget, if that was something like x cubed, I could have an ax plus b at the front. If that's lower, then you've just got the partial fractions section here. Okay, once I've done that, uh, I'm expecting you to be able to do this yourself. You can work out your a, your b, and your c value using whatever technique you like. Gets you 2 plus 1 over x plus 1 minus 3 over x minus 2. So that is just writing it as a rational function and um, working out the partial fractions part. Once I've got that, now I can integrate this a lot easier. So the integration of 2 is just going to be uh, 2x. This bit here, because x plus 1 differentiates to 1, that means this is just going to be ln of x plus 1. Because x minus 2 differentiates to 1, so the 3 comes to the front, then this bit will go to 3, ln x minus 2. So therefore, I can work it out very easily because the denominator differentiates to the numerator, or close enough, some scalar amount of it. OK, so that's fine. That's, that is normal A2 maths just there. So you'll be expected to do that in your A2 maths. OK, so what I'm going to do is give you that one to have a think about. All right, let's have a go at solving that using any techniques you can, whether it be normal maths or whether it be um, some of the stuff we've just looked at. OK, so just press carry on when you're ready. OK, I expected you to get stuck with this one. All right, there's different things you could try. And unfortunately, everything seems to fail. So, for example, uh, did you try partial fractions? If you try partial fractions, 
then you'll notice that the bottom does not factorize. So because the bottom doesn't factorize, because it's what's called an irreducible quadratic, you are stuck with it at that stage. You can't reduce it any further. So partial fractions is out the window. Uh, did you think it was one of the ones that maybe the bottom differentiates to the top? Maybe using the LUN function we just used. But unfortunately, the two X is close, but then you get minus four, not plus one. So that's not very helpful. OK, and it's also maybe you thought, actually, I could use my um, skills that we did earlier on, which is to do with rewriting them as shine, cosh, tan, whatever you want to do. But unfortunately, because there's two X's on the top, you can't use the standard result either. So we are stuck with this. It's made it a little bit more tricky. So what we're going to do is we want to rearrange it so that we can use some of these skills. Right, in your notebooks, just stick down the integral. Let's have a look how we go about solving an integral in this form. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite it. I'm going to rewrite it, rearrange, so that I do get 2x minus 4 on the numerator. So a bit of cheating, really. If I had 2x minus 4 on the numerator, this would have been a lot easier to do. So what I can do is I can rewrite it like that. OK, 2x plus 1 is exactly the same as 2x minus 4 plus 5. It's the same thing, isn't it? Exactly the same. But now what I can do is because I know about fractions and I can separate things out with additions, then I could rewrite this fraction just here like this. OK, I could write it as a function of the 2x minus 4. That's great because then I can use my LUN idea because the bottom, the denominator differentiates the numerator. And this one here, I could think about using standard results because now I've got a constant on the top. And they still add together to make that initial one. So I'm allowed to separate it out like this. This is my goal. Numerator differentiates the denominator. Uh, sorry, denominator differentiates the numerator. Fine, left with a constant over the function. So then if I use standard results. OK, so once I've done that then, well, this bit here is just your LUN function, like I just said. So that's going to be LUN of x squared minus 4x plus 5. This bit. If I did a bit of completing the square, I should be able to use my standard results. OK, so let's have a go. Well, this bit just here, fine, we'll leave that and we'll deal with that in a second. This bit here, if I write this as x minus 2 squared plus 1, there I go. I've got my x squared plus a squared. I take the 5 out. OK, so what do I end up with then? Well, the first bit is just going to be a LUN. So that bit's fine. This bit is going to be because it's a squared plus uh, sorry x squared plus a squared it is the tan and just to make sure though that that bit differentiates to one if that bit differentiates to one fine if it differentiates to anything else you must divide by that number like we just saw all right you could do the full substitution if you want to or you could just learn that fact differentiate this and divide by that result so the differentiation of x minus two is one. So I could divide by one or just leave it out. So that's where 5 tan to the minus 1 of x minus 2 plus c comes from. Once I've got that result, that's it. I've managed to work out the integral. OK, so let's have a look at another example, even bigger this one. So I want to find the answer to that. Now notice I've put it down in a slightly different way. Given that you've got the gradient function, can you find y? So we're solving it as a differential, a differential equation. It's the same idea. OK, right, you might want to have a go at that yourself. So by all means, pause and have a play with yourself on a rough piece of paper. See how far you get. OK, so the first thing I want to do is I've noticed that the bottom, uh, the numerator and the denominator are both the same order. So I could definitely write this out as a plus something. Um, I've also, looking at that denominator, and they probably would give you this hint in part of the question, I could probably find an answer to that and I could factorise out some value because it's a cubic function. So it's got to have at least one solution. So the solution we found, and I'll give you the hint if you don't, if you haven't found it yourself, is 2. If x equals 2, then this part here equals 0. So therefore, x minus 2 is a factor. OK, so they might give you that in the first part of the question. Once I've got the factor, that means I can write this bottom bit a little bit easier. 
So I know I could write it like this, x minus 2 and 4x squared plus 9 for the other part. So I've factorised my denominator. Now that I've factorised my denominator, I can definitely separate this out a little bit. I can see I've got some sort of partial fraction idea going here. So I can use my partial fractions and I need to be careful right? because these two are the same. It's definitely going to have an A value there. The B over x minus 2, that's fine. But because I've got 4x squared plus 9, then this number here must be one lower. That's why if you've got a linear, you put down just a B value, a constant. This number here should always just be of order one less than the one above. So because I've got an x squared, I should write down a linear term above it. OK, always one less than the denominator. So be very careful. It's very common to accidentally put C down, A, B and C for that without noticing. Right, so once I've done that, I can use my skills of um, working out the A, Bs and C values by doing substitution techniques. So there we go, I've written it out fully in this case. Um, I could do work out when X equals two, for example, cancel out those, get me the B value and so on. But to help you out, A equals two, B equals one. All right, you can see two straight away, by the way, because of course it's eight over four. So a equals 2, b equals 1, c equals 0, and d equals 1 in this case. So we end up with being able to write that hideous function at the start to something like 2 plus 1 over x minus 2 plus 1 over 4x squared plus 9. And that's something a lot more manageable for you to integrate now. So if I want to find the expression for when y, we now integrate it. So the integration of 2 goes to 2x, of course. The integration of 1 over x minus 2 is going to be ln, because it's just x, so it's ln x minus 2. And this one, I just need to be careful with, with that 4. So I'm going to write it as 2x squared. So I need to remember that I need this as u, so therefore it's going to be du. And because I differentiate this and get 2, I should have a half coming into it. You need to be very careful, as it's going to demonstrate here. So it's a half du, so therefore it's a half of u squared plus 3 squared, therefore we get a sixth at the end. Okay, the reason why it's a sixth is because, of course, it's 1 over 3 as well. So you've got 1 over 3 from the formula, and you've got 1 over 2 from the fact it's 2x. So your end answer is 1 over 6, tan to the minus 1 of u over 3. Uh, what is u? u is 2x. So we can put that back in. OK. So a rather extreme looking function at the start, but you can use all sorts of techniques to get down to your answer at the end. Right. So it'd be a good idea to have a go at practicing some of those. So pause if you still need time. Right. On this exercise, just on 9D, then have a go at practicing some of those skills of using partial fractions and rational functions.